This is a History of Western Thought, program number seven on the atomists. Now today we're discussing a philosophical school of thought that is identified with a number of different philosophers, uh, but the atomists were founded supposedly by a man named Leucippus, who we don't really have any writings from. All we have is certain mentions of him and other works from figures such as Aristotle. But the most prominent and most important writer in this particular movement is a man named Democritus. Now, uh, Democritus is often considered our best source for at least early forms of what is known as atomism. Though it must be confessed that what we discuss today as atomism is not only a pre-Socratic uh, form of thought, which we are going to be looking at today, uh, but it has some pretty strong impact upon later thinkers as well. But as for today, we are going to be restricting our study of the atomists to Democritus and the earlier thinkers within the movement. So within the atomist movement, we have answers to some of the same philosophical questions that we have been asking throughout these last programs. And in particular, we've been discussing the notion of change in the world as well as permanence in the world in various ways uh, that thinkers try to make sense of both of those realities. And what we saw in Anaxagoras as well as Empedocles is there were attempts to try to argue that there was some kind of fundamental reality, some kind of fundamental being, a material being that underlied the stru structure of all of other things. Uh, and so uh, while Empedocles argued that that was the four elements, Anaxagoras Pythagoras said that this was all of the elements. They had small little particles that were intertwined or intermixed with one another. The atomists took a very similar idea, but simply took it one step farther and developed these views more. They argued that the fundamental notion of being, the underlying reality that remains constant, are little particles that they referred to as atoms. Now we have to realize that when we're they're talking about atoms, we're not using it in the same precise scientific sense that we speak about atoms today. For Democritus and the atomists, the atom is simply the smallest element. And what makes this very important is that this element makes up everything else that exists. Now the number of atoms is actually infinite and they are not all identical, though they are the same kind of substance, the same kind of thing. They have all different sizes and shapes. But what's really significant about the atoms is that they are indivisible. And it's thought that as we move into studying reality or modern science as we think of today, according to the atomists, uh, if we were to examine all of reality under a microscope and get small enough, eventually we were to find one particle that is absolutely indivisible. It is one that you cannot separate. And so these elements or atoms are infinite, they are indivisible. Now, divisibility, remember, is very important. It's very important in the paradoxes of Zeno, where he argues that this notion of, of infinity, that everything can be divided into infinity, which means that an infinite amount of events have to occur in order for motion to happen because everything can be just broken up infinitely or divided infinitely. And so in order to get around this problem, the atomists argue essentially you can't break down reality infinitely. There is some part of reality that is, if you get small enough, completely indivisible in itself. So here we have a way that Zeno's paradoxes and the ideas of, of Parmenides are answered. While they're fundamental promotion of the idea that there is some kind of unchanging being or unchanging reality underneath everything that exists is also defended by the atomists. So thus far, it sounds like atomism is pretty similar in many ways to the previous philosophers that we've looked at. Anaxagoras and Empedocles also argued that there were fundamental elements that made up all of reality. This accounts for the constancy or consistency in the world. This accounts for the oneness and unity in the world. While these various particles or elements are mixed in different ways in that mixing or blending of the elements then constitutes various particular objects that we encounter in our everyday experience. However, the atomists actually go quite a bit beyond this. And why I say that is because the atomists develop a mechanistic approach to reality. Now, what do I mean by mechanistic? Mechanistic, meaning the view that the way that the world functions is basically mechanical, and it is purely material in nature. It is not spiritual, it is not governed by any kind of divine mind. If you remember, 
Empedocles argues that there are these forces of love and hate that control the movement of the elements in the world. And Axenagoras argues that there is a divine mind that controls the movement of things in the world. But the atomists don't seem to have a problem with motion at all. They just assume that the atoms somehow are just in motion as they are. And so if the atoms are just in motion, seemingly there is no need to explain motion by bringing up anything outside of it. No notion of a god or a divine mind outside of the material world controlling the movement of material elements. Now, this really leaves a fundamental problem for atomism that they don't really adequately address. Now, at least the early atomists don't really give any kind of explanation as to how these material elements are in motion at all. So Empedocles and Exagoras and others have ways of explaining motion uh, because there is some kind of force that is the cause of motion. The atomists simply do not have that. Now, later atomists come to the conclusion that weight plays a role in the falling of the atoms and the movement of the atoms then causes movement in the world around it. However, it doesn't appear that the earliest atomists had any notion of these ideas at all. So there really is no way to explain then the reality of motion. How do these just static material objects come into motion with one another at all? There has to be some kind of first cause. Now this is the problem that's going to be picked up by other philosophers that come afterwards. So Aristotle and Plato and others do not see the purely materialist account of reality as found by the atomists to be convincing. Now this may be strange to a lot of modern thinkers because the atomist picture of the world is one that was adopted later in the mechanistic philosophy coming through Descartes in the modern world. Though of course Descartes himself did not deny the existence of God or of the soul. Now the atomists did speak about a soul, but they viewed the soul as a material thing made up of a certain kind of atoms, or the fastest moving atoms which account for the realities of life and mind. One, when examining the thought of the early Greek philosophers then, as we've done so far, at least in the pre-Socratics, look, might look at the atomists and, and think that they look like something modern, and in many ways they do. Because like many modern materialist thinkers, reality is essentially physical in nature. Everything can be broken down to its smallest component parts, and these parts they describe as atoms. In contemporary materialist philosophy, similarly, Thinkers from that approach argue that everything is at heart material or physical. There is nothing non-physical about reality at all. Now, this leads to immense difficulties in explaining things like the origin of motion as well as the nature of consciousness. But these ideas aren't to be explored yet. We'll examine these as we get into further thinkers. So these are the basic ideas of the atomist philosophers, and they are going to be challenged by Plato, Aristotle, as well as the Christian tradition. Thanks so much for watching this. If you found this educational and interesting, please do like and subscribe and share these videos. We'll see you next time.